Our scripture reading for today is taken from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, and commencing to read at verse 6. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, Why criticise this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Amen. In our scripture reading for today, we were reminded of a beautiful act which happened as the lady came and poured the, the oil on, on Jesus, on the perfume on Jesus to prepare him for his upcoming burial. A rather strange thing, you might think, um, because he was still alive. There was no hint for many of the people that Jesus was going to die at that time. And yet, and yet, that lady prepared him for his burial. And it's not the first time that there had been such preparations had been going on. Many times throughout Jesus' ministry, there were preparations being made. If we take just a few steps back, um, going through Jesus' ministry, he's trying to tell the disciples um, all about God, preparing them for a time when he was no longer going to be physically present with them. If we take a look at many of the miracles which uh, Jesus undertook, there are miracles over nature, showing God's power over the entire world. There are mir miracles over people's health and showing that God has created us as very special beings. There are miracles over even people who had demons inside them showing that nothing was out with the control of God. Preparations have followed all throughout Jesus' ministry. When it came to the wedding in Cana, Jesus felt that perhaps he wasn't ready to start his ministry, but his mother knew that the time was right and told those who were the servants there to do whatever Jesus told them to. The preparation that they had to do showed God's work in the world. If we go back even further, Jesus prepared himself in the desert, taken out to be tempted over and over again, showing that he was indeed ready. He was committed to his father's work. Rewind further and you find John the Baptist trying to prepare the people for Jesus coming into the world, for his ministry to be amongst them. John the Baptist going out into the desert, going out to proclaim that Messiah was with them. And going back further still, we find over and over again that Jesus is preparing as a young boy going to Jerusalem. He stayed behind when his earthly parents had disappeared back home and of course when they discovered he was no longer with the family group they were frantic with worry but he was preparing for his future ministry by speaking to the religious leaders of the day in the temple and back further i do miss those parts of scripture that it doesn't tell us about what really happened during uh, Jesus' growing up years. The time that he spent with his father and his mother. The time that he spent in that family home with brothers and sisters. But there was preparation done there. There was preparation done in Bethlehem 
when Jesus was born, born in the manger. The angels went to speak to the shepherds. The wise men followed the star which God had prepared, placed in the sky for them to follow. And we can go further and further back. And we find the preparation has been going on all that time. And all that preparation leads us to where we are now. Ready to celebrate. Ready to look again at the sacrifice which was given for us. I pray that you will prepare your heart and your mind to receive from God this Easter time. May God bless you. Today's Bible reading is a well-known story of one woman's extravagant, lavish, almost wasteful, some would say, act of devotion, of worship towards Jesus Christ. I thought it'd be a nice idea to film on the banks of Loch Ness, expressing something of God's lavish, extravagant love and generosity to us, his creatures. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to record audio on the banks of Loch Ness because of the sound of the wind and the waves, but uh, I'm quite sure you're happy to have the background picture while we uh, in enjoy a prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this amazing beauty and bounty that lies before us. All throughout the Highlands of Scotland and indeed throughout the whole of your creation, there is an extravagance, a lavishness about all that you have created in its beauty, in its wonder, in its majesty. We thank you for all of that, O Lord. And we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who this week we remember offered us everything. His very life was laid down for us. We thank you, Lord, for that incredible generosity and for the promise of Scripture that that having given us your Son, Jesus Christ, there's nothing you would withhold from us. We, we just bow in humble adoration with thanksgiving, with praise, with worship. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.